G'day, Ben from Duck Playing Chicken here with a new build series. And we're returning to my favorite Studio Ghibli film, Porco Rosso, with the build of the Curtis R3C0 148 scale by Fine Molds. And of course, this was piloted by Donald Curtis in the film, Porco Rosso. This is a 148 scale kit. You might have seen my previous video where I did a 172nd of the Porco Rosso's uh, Savoia uh, S21. So um, this is a little bit of a different scale for me, but I'm really looking forward to this kit. So I'm going to start off showing you what's in the box. It's got you know, a bit of reference to the uh, the anime, the film in here. And we open it up. Now, all these sprues, they do come in protective bags, but I've taken them out just so they make less of a noise. There's not a lot of pieces in this kit, but get this out of the way, we go through it. It actually does have a remarkable amount of detail. So we've got sort of a full cockpit with seated pilot. We've got the included trolley for carrying the plane on. Um, you know, there's all little wheels for the trolley, um, the brackets for holding them in, and then of course we've got uh, some really nice detailed uh, engine pieces. So that's the first sprue. The second sprue is the fuselage. You can sort of see the, uh, you know, there's a bit of rivet detail in there. We've got the floats. You know, stabilizers, the struts that hold the floats on. And then we have the the wings. So we've got like a two part there by the look of it. And the final sprue is a nice little touch. This is um, a, uh, a figure of Donald Curtis. Beautifully detailed. And it just comes with a little stand there, so that's a, it's a nice little addition. Now that's all the sprues. Of course, it comes with water slide decals, predominantly for the yellow markings. Now for these, I'll actually be painting them. I won't be using the the decals for the markings. And in fact, the only decals I probably will end up using are for the seat belt potentially and the little snake uh, figure. Oh, and of course the uh, details for the um, instrument panels, but most of these yellow details I won't actually use. Also includes a couple of poly caps. Looks like only two of those. There is a clear piece for the uh, windshield. And then it comes with two bolts, which I believe are used to weigh down the floats at the front so that uh, the plane you know, sits properly when you're displaying it. Then finally, we have the instructions. So there is a lot of detail on the sort of history of the planes, um, you know, um, a lot of, because of course, uh, Miyazaki-san was uh, obsessed with planes from this era, the sort of golden age of sea planes. And yeah, there's a lot of information here about the actual plane. Of course, it is all in Japanese, but you know, you run it through Google Translate, you'll, you'll soon get an idea. So we have um, call out of the sprues, pretty straightforward there. And then we get into the construction. So you can see the first bit, like most plane kits, you sort of start with the uh, start with the cockpit and then of course you can sort of mask that off and do the rest of the plane so We've got yeah, the two-piece wings we've Got that engine detail the firewall The inside of the fuselage for the uh, cockpit um, And then yeah, so you sort of build the engine and the cockpit and then sandwich the two fuselage halves together so not an unusual way of building a, a an aeroplane kit pretty straightforward um, it is a nice touch that you sort of you can detail up the engine and you can take that leave that panel 
on the front there as a loose fit if you want to display it open revealing the uh, the engine so there's the bolts that I was talking about that are used in the um, used in the floats it's kind of nice they've included that normally you see instructions will refer to using lead shot or um, you know to wait at finding something yourself but they actually include this in the kit um, the lower wing and then sort of the the final assembly and yeah you can see that uh, engine panel they say don't glue it so um, yeah. now we've got uh, the construction of the trolley and uh, finally the uh, the propeller painting guide now most of the painting call outs are sort of throughout the instructions uh, they do give you a list of um, uh, what's that GSI Tamiya by the look of it um, and then they sort of give you some English um, uh, colors there uh, so they give you some English equivalents if you don't have those specific uh, those specific paints they've called out so then we've got the uh, looks like painting call outs for the body and also for decals so that's the instructions and what comes in the kit. There is one thing I am going to attempt with this kit and I'm not sure if it's even possible to do it just with the nature of the design of the aeroplane. But what I'd like to do is actually motorize the propeller. And I have this tiny little DC motor. So it's a little three volt motor and if I power it up it sounds like an angry wasp but if I use a some form of DC motor control I'll be able to slow the motor down there we go so you can see it's got a reasonable amount of speed but I don't want to spin the propeller that fast um, so I will use a, a motor uh, speed controller, but I'm hoping that I can somehow squeeze this into the uh, into the motor or into the front of the plane somehow. I'm thinking it might be close. I might have to, you know, grind out a few pieces here and there, but um, yeah, I reckon I reckon it's going to sort of. Uh, might fit in there if we're lucky. If I can get it in the right spot, I believe it'll go through here somewhere. And of course, it's not going to sit in there, but uh, you get the you get the idea. Um, or actually, if I got that in the wrong spot, you got that around the wrong way. I don't know. Um, I need to sort of see if it'll work or not. And look, it, it may be a bit of a pipe dream. It is. Um, going to be a bit of an overkill for this kit but I think it would be nice if I could have the the prop spinning the other problem I'm going to have is where I run the wires to so I don't really have any sort of convenient place to open the plane up to put a battery in or anything so I think I'm going to have to run the power outside of the outside of the plane which means I've got to run the wires through these very thin spars here and I really don't know how much I can sort of grind those out before I lose uh, structural integrity. So looking at it, I think it's going to be um, too problematic. Just don't think I'll be able to get the wire thin enough to sort of go through there and then hide it. Um, unless I scratch build part of this. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about it. So the next step is for me to start trimming parts off sprues and start the actual assembly. I've started cutting pieces off sprues and doing a little bit of assembly. So I've started on the uh, cockpit. And just a word of advice, um, the, the fit's not really tight for uh, these two sort of frame pieces where the dials sit 
and where the uh, the back of the chair sort of uh, attaches to. So what I did was I sort of put them, I glued them in place and then I set them, there's a couple of grooves in the uh, fuselage that they sort of match up to and then I would sort of just clamp them in place just making sure that they were sitting within the grooves that they were supposed to and actually tape it up and that way when the glue sets up on these they're actually set up in the right position there's still a little bit of flex there but um, yeah I just found that that was sort of an easy way of doing it of course the chair's got to go in there and the, and the control stick but um, you know at least I've got that sort of glued in place the other thing is the uh, the engine mount so it's just basically you know this is the profile of the fuselage and then it has these two struts that the the engine sort of sits on yeah so it'll sort of sit in place kind of like that so yeah there's the engine mount and once again there's a slot in the fuselage that that sort of sits into that allows you to get sort of the engine all set up and everything and then of course you sit this the cockpit set them all in place before you put on the other half of the fuselage now the added complexity that I've added to this kit of course is trying to motorize the propeller so in order to do that I have had to make some modifications to the motor so the first thing I've done, this is the end piece that the sort of, uh, where's the prop? So this is the end piece that has a poly cap in it and then the, uh, uh, the propeller, so the, the prop um, goes into goes into the hole like that. And because it's on a um, poly cap, it holds pretty tight. But I'm not going to be using the polycat. What I want to do is actually use this very small DC motor. So I've had to drill out this section in here. If I can hang on to it long enough. So I've had to drill this out. I've drilled it out with a four millimeter drill. And now the motor can go in there and you can see the shaft pokes out the other side. So that's the that's the plan and the way that uh, this sort of all sets up is if I remember which way it goes trying to get around the right way <clears throat> okay so that's kind of how it's going to sit now I've also had to cut out a little channel just at the back for the wires to come out um, and I think what I'll do is I'll just use some two-part epoxy to sort of hold that in place this thing's going to vibrate quite a bit so I really want to make sure that it's sort of in there pretty rock solid um, so there's not a lot of chance for the vibration I am going to be running it pretty slow but I still don't want it to you know I don't want the plane to sort of sound like a mobile phone <laughs> going off in silent mode on the you know when it's sitting on the bench so I want to try and reduce that as much as possible I might even try putting in some foam or something maybe to reduce that vibration I'm not entirely sure but whatever I'm going to do I need to make sure it's secured in place so there's the very small shaft that's going to come out so what I'll end up doing is probably cutting this peg off and just drilling a hole into the back of this that's the right size to sort of push fit over the shaft and hopefully I can get it nice and square that's going to be the biggest problem is if this thing isn't sort of at least close to balanced it's going to look really strange when it's spinning so um, that's one bit I'm not really looking forward to because if that doesn't work what I mean now I've got to do is just stick it in place and be done with it not worry about the motor I think I've had a slight change of plans after messing around with trying to work out how I was going to wire this thing my original intention was to actually set this up on a base with 
some sort of water effect like it had sort of landed so the idea was to feed the wires down into the floats um, you know that hang from the bottom of the plane so what I started doing was actually uh, carving out this channel for one of the struts for the wires to come down from the body from the fuselage down here through one of the floats and then out the bottom and then I could have mounted it on a base and you know poured some resin or something for a, a water effect now this is just proved to be an absolute nightmare it's too thin and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in and sort of fill that back in and sand it and try to make it look like the other side again so what I thought I would do is I would set it up so that it's flying as opposed to land it in the water and I think it's going to be way better for a number of reasons. First of all, I think you, know, you can see how I've sort of got it mounted here. It's going to be a lot more sort of dynamic. And because I have the, I also have the Savoia in this scale as well. I could do it on a different, you know, on a different angle and, you know, have it look like they're sort of, um, you know, chasing each other. So I want to sort of talk about what I've, you know, how I sort of got to this point and why I think it's a better option. There are a number of reasons why going down, trying to feed the wires through the struts are going to be problematic. First of all, it was in the construction. So what I would have had to have done is glue the fuselage together, um, you know, deal with the seams and then try and feed the wires through a very small hole in the fuselage and then run it down here. And then glue this strut in place. And to me, it was just going to be incredibly problematic. I was going to have to do sort of, you know, painting in a lot of different stages and stuff. So, um, you know, I think I started out thinking I knew what I was going to do, but then as, uh, I started looking at it logically, um, I soon became aware that it was going to be really problematic. The other thing too, by doing it in this, uh, you know, doing it while it's flying, setting it up on a post like this, means that I don't actually have to paint up the trolley that it comes on, so, you know, that's one less thing to paint, I guess. <laughs> so I want to talk about how I've set this up. First of all, I purchased these uh, they're acrylic, I think they're gift boxes, but they have a really nice tight fit lid um, and they're really quite smooth. Apart, you can see a bit of a uh, wavy effect there, but that's actually just in the, the casting of the acrylic. It's not actually on the surface. The only imperfection is sort of this uh, where they've poured the, the mold here. But you can actually use that to our advantage by putting the post in there. And it means that you can sort of take the bottom off to, you know, change battery and put all your electronics in. Um, I think when this is all painted up matte black, it'll look really nice. And it's a lot cleaner job than what I could do if I was going to create it just straight out of, um, straight out of styrene sheet. So I took one of these and then I took some three millimeter aluminum tube. Now this, this tube is fantastic. It's about as small as you can get in order to you know, run this kind of gauge wire, which is just you know, incredibly thin. So, so I wanted the thinnest possible tube. Um, I did want it metal. And what I did was I drilled a three mil hole in the base here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, the plane off, try not to, just do it gently. And of course the, the plane's all just taped together at the moment. But I drilled a three mil hole on an angle so that gives me a lot more options there. I think it's going to be looking, uh, it's going to look a lot more dynamic because I have the smaller, the 172nd scale, I have that sort of sitting, you know, in its trolley, it's not really that exciting. So I think this will probably be a little bit more dynamic. I'll be able to have the, you know, have the propeller spinning while it's flying, 
and I think um, yeah it's going to be a better result. Yeah, you know, I can work on fixing all the seams of the fuselage and getting that all buttoned up with the cockpit and the engine. You know, get that all sort of done. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be so much easier to sort of feed the wire through this uh, through this wing now. So, change of plan just goes to show that uh, you know, best of intentions aren't always uh, aren't always the best. But you know, we uh, we live and learn. And I think. I'm going to be a lot happier with this result. Before I sort of start painting, I want to point out a couple of things with the construction of this kit. First of all, I'm going to start with the uh, cockpit. And you can see the instrument panel there is dead flat. So the thing I really like about this kit is they give you the option of the flat one if you want to use the water slide decal. But they also give you one with raised detail. So if you want to go down musical chairs path of insanity and actually hand paint those dials and uh, things on the dash there then you can so the um it's good they give you the choice of the two instrument panels i've gone for the cop out where it's just flat and there'll be a water slide decal that goes over that and it will look fine Given that it's actually going to be hidden quite a bit by the uh, the wing over the top, and of course the pilot's going to be sitting in there, you're really hardly going to even see it anyway. Now, I haven't attached the chair or the uh, control stick yet because they're going to be painted up in different colours, whereas the bulk of this I think is a uh, grey or something, and there's like the metal uh, pedals. Speaking of the control stick, it is tiny. It is just minuscule, and I'm about to lose it there. Now, the problem is with this particular piece is that the uh, sprue comes in on the side like that. So be really careful when you're sanding that. Would have been nicer if they'd sort of attached the sprue at the bottom of it, but they haven't. So just be really careful with that one. And of course, we have the chair. There are some decals to come with the seat belts. So I'm going to put the decals in for the seat belts here. The pilot himself is really nicely detailed. His goggles, even his moustache is moulded in there. A lovely pair of moustachios. The one thing to note is that there is a seam line that runs, or a mould line that runs all the way along his side. So you really need to sort of scrape um, that off. Now, the way I tend to do figures at this size is pretty rough. I'll give them a, a paint and then sort of use a bit of a wash to uh, capture some of the detail. And if you don't get rid of that mold line, um, the wash is gonna highlight that like there's no tomorrow. So just be aware of that one. There is the, uh, of course, the engine mount, uh, which you would have seen uh, me talk about previously, but uh, just make sure that it is square. It does have these little angle pieces in here, but you really just wanna make sure that when you're gluing it, it doesn't sort of sag or anything and it stays um, you know, at 90 degrees. Now I believe this is the radiator, but don't uh, count me on that. This um, sort of sits underneath the uh, front of the fuselage of the plane. So it's sort of, uh, you know, like, like so. This just is uh, two halves. So you can see there's a seam line there I've got to deal with. Um, and yeah, this will be metal. The rest of it will be sort of blue, but the front grill will be uh, a metallic. I've gone ahead and started putting up the mess I made of this strut. So basically that uh, valley that I, I, I chiseled out um, and all that patience <laughs> making it happen without actually breaking it. Now I'm filling it in with buddy. So this is going to take multiple stages and just a bit of patience to sort of sand it so that it's, um, so it's the same as the other side. The fuselage halves, there's limited detail on the inside. You can sort of see that little grey piece there that's stuck in and there's two grey pieces stuck in here. So both of those, I'll do the interior colour of the cockpit and the engine bay and then I'll probably just hand paint these with a brush. It's probably going to be easier. Now the uh, machine guns come in two pieces, so you've got the main machine gun and then you can see the uh, the, the handle there, the little grey piece. So again, 
the sprue attachment is on the side of the shaft of that lever um, so be really careful when you're sort of cleaning that up I have um, glued both of the floats together so these each come in two halves and you can see the glue um, along the top there that of course that needs sanding once it's all dried properly now given that I'm actually going to put this on a stand I haven't bothered with putting the bolts in the float so the bolts are included in the kit to give it some weight if you've got it just sitting flat on a desk because mine will be permanently mounted on a on a pole um, I haven't put the uh, the bolts in there so they'll need some cleanup now the top wing is interesting in the fact that it's first of all it's actually made up of three parts so the top is all one piece and then each of these sides is a separate piece and I don't know if it's just my kit but this one doesn't match up properly so you can see that sort of gap there that I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to sort of add some putty and fill that in because on the other side it's matched up perfectly and at first I thought it was the pins and or the pegs and the holes not lining up properly but no it was um, a bit of uh, putty work I think is going to be needed there so anyway um, that's the top wing and now probably to one of the coolest things is the engine so I think this is the first time I've ever done a kit where the the motor um, actually goes sort of into <laughs> into the actual engine itself oops I should have it the right way um, there we go so you can see I've mounted the little DC motor I'm going to take the uh, prop off I've mounted the DC motor um, in the engine here and all of this is two-part epoxy basically I needed something in there to hold it in tight and keep it um, as true as I could there is a small hole out the back that I've created to have the wires feed out the back here. Um, when you're looking down in the top of the fuselage, there's a, an opening where you can see the engine. You won't see this uh, this wire at all. So um, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. So now it's just a matter of sort of buttoning this up. I can uh, put the other half, and there's also a piece that sort of goes in the top there, and then we have. Uh, you know an engine where it's uh, an actual working engine well a motor anyway so when I put the uh, propeller on I've sort of the prop comes with a shaft on it that fits into a polycap but of course I've just shaved that down and drilled a hole directly into the uh, into the prop here now the shaft on this DC motor I think was about 0.7 millimeters, so it's quite um, quite small. All right, let's see if I can get this motor started. There we go. You can see it's not exactly true. It's got a bit of a wobble to it. Um, so I think I may have to putty up the hole and sort of re-drill it try and start again but the thing is is that um, I will I will have to have a, a motor controller circuit attached to this because I don't think I want it spinning that fast the the prop hasn't actually come off yet um, but it could do so I just yeah I want to sort of slow it down a bit I mean really it's not it's not supposed to be accurate to the actual machine you know it's not supposed to be spinning at the same rpm as it would in real life um, it's just to give an indication that you know the props moving so I'm really happy with that um, that's all sort of going well so the next step is sort of to do some painting so I've got to work out which paints I want to use and then I can actually start priming um, certainly the cockpit getting the cockpit and the engine done so that way I can sort of button up the fuselage I've done quite a bit of work on the cockpit and so I want to take this opportunity to talk about the, 
the colors that I'll be using and that I've already used before I close it all up and we never see it again. <laughs> so first of all, the interior of the cockpit, the call out is a neutral gray and these little details are uh, these little containers on the side. There's one here, one on the other side. I've just painted that with, uh, with black, uh, just brush painted using Ultimate Primer Gloss Black. And of course, it doesn't matter it's gloss because I've matte coated it. But some of the other colors that I've used uh, for the gray, I've just actually used Surfacer Gray. Uh, it's a nice sort of mid gray and I think it, um, it works pretty well. There are a couple of details that are uh, supposed to be you know, metal or aluminium, like the seat and also the bottom part of the engine, the top of the engine, um, and a few other sort of small details. So for that, I've used SMS Super Silver. For the exhausts that are going to go down the side of it, I'm actually going to use uh, SMS Gun Metal. And then if we look at some of the other um, details, we've got brown around the edge of the cockpit opening. And for that, I'm using Leo Model Air 71041 Armour Brown. And I just brush painted that on. You can also see I've applied the decals. So there's the instrument panel there's also the seat belts as well. So they're the only decals that go on the interior. For the engine, I painted it up, but I wasn't that fussed about it because you're actually going to see very little of it. You're actually going to see just sort of this top bit. If I get the other half on, let me quickly show you. You're literally going to only see that part of it. So I've just added a bit of a... Uh, I think it was Tamiya panel line accent color brown, dark brown, just to give it a little bit of um, contrast there. But that's all you're going to see with the motor, unless you're actually going to sort of permanently have this thing in two halves, which is unlikely. So a lot of this detail you're never even going to see. It was a little bit of brush painting of silver that I did in there, like the pedals and also on the stem of the control stick. And for that, I used uh, Leo Model Air 71063 silver. I've also stuck these components in here, so these are now glued in, and I've checked that you know the two halves fit together properly. So I'm basically pretty much good to go to stick this together, deal with all the seams, because there will be a seam that runs all the way down the middle. And of course, the other components that are going to go on here, we have the, um, uh, you know, the, the top wing. So you get an idea there of what you're going to see in the cockpit, which is very little. And of course, the, uh, the motor as well. So, talking about the rest of the colours I'm going to use, um, for the main blue colour, they actually call out uh, FS colour, and it's FS15050, so for SMS it's called Blue Angels Blue, that's what I'll be using for most of the, most of the fuselage and the wings. For the struts that hold the floats, I'll be using this lighter blue, so this is uh, aggressive blue. It's not actually the right color based on the call outs and the instructions, but it's about as close as I can get. I might darken it up a little bit, I see how I go. Now there are a number of yellow elements on this plane, so um, I'm actually going to use trainer yellow. So this one's you know, a bit of a warmer sort of yellow. It's got um, you know, a little bit, of, uh, little bit of red in it, so that's, uh, that's good, I'll use that. And of course I'll be doing that over a white primer. So there's, there's yellow stripes that go on the top of the top wing, they don't go on the bottom, they're just on the top. So I primed in white first, then I'll paint yellow and then I'll mask it just using a bit of Tamiya masking tape. 
There's also a couple of stripes on the bottom wing, so underneath. Um, again, there's none that go on the top of the wing. It's just underneath. So there'll be two stripes there. So the next step for me is to finally get this uh, fuselage together and deal with all the seams, including the seam that sits at the back of the chair. So it's a bit hard to see, but there is a uh, problematic gap there that I'm gonna have to putty up. I'll probably just use some Mr. Surfacer um, to, to fill that gap, sand it, and then repaint it in that, uh, that brown color. So, uh, yeah. Now, I'm not, at this stage, I'm not gonna be sort of attaching the wings as well. I need to sort out the um, pipe that's gonna go in the bottom. I've already sort of got the, the hole there ready to go, but I need to sort of get that epoxied in before I attach the, uh, attach the wing. So that's where I'm up to at this stage. I've done most of the initial painting for the kit. So I just wanna sort of take you through my progress. Um, first of all, with the floats, they have come up really quite well. Now, as far as masking goes, I use the same method I did for my uh, 170 second Savoia, where basically I ran the tape um, along, I sort of, I painted the uh, yellow first, I think. So I did white and then yellow, and then I put uh, the tape down and I actually used a sanding stick to sort of sand the edge very gently until the tape sort of gave a nice clean edge. So that's um, that's come up pretty well. So all those pieces I'm about to show you, these are all ready for a gloss coat so I can do the, the panel lining. So both of the wings, uh, you know, the initial paint is down and they've come up pretty well. This is the bottom one. So again, I just did a white uh, primer first, put the yellow down, then mask that. I just used a bit of Tamiya tape and um, used the decals for reference as far as the width. Now the struts that are for holding the floats in place, they're a combination of colors. So you got the sort of dark blue, uh, for the bits that stick into the floats and the fuselage. Then you've got this lighter blue for the actual uh, bars and then a little bit of silver uh, where they join. So that was a little bit fiddly, um, just doing a bit of hand painting there for the silver. I've masked off the, uh, the windshield. Uh, of course, you're not gonna see much there, um, but it's literally just around the edges, the frame of the uh, the windshield. So I've still got the tape on there. I'll give it a gloss coat and then a matte coat, and then um, I'll be able to remove the masking. The machine guns are done. So again, this was just a little bit of finger paint, finger painting, a little bit of brush painting to do the the handle there and or the crank and the uh, barrel itself. Um, these are the struts that go between two wings. Again, they're in that lighter blue color. I kept them on the sprue to paint them just because of where the sprues attach. You know, you're not gonna see that. So that's the bit that'll glue into each of the wings. Same for the exhaust. These is uh, done in sort of gunmetal. Again, paint it on the sprue just because of where the sprue attachment is. It's not so much of an issue. Got the engine cover, I've painted that up separately. Now the radiator, at the moment, I've got the metal part masked off, and so that's the bit of tape there, you can see that's uh, the clip's holding on to, but uh, you know, I had to clean up the, the seams on it. And uh, yeah, did the metal first, and then masked that, and did the blue. Now the prop, I haven't actually started painting yet, and the problem is you can probably see it there, that hole that I drilled is not centered. So what I've been doing is slowly filling it up with super glue uh, so that I can re-drill it. And I think I'm gonna to have to put this in a drill press to get it nice and uh, nice and straight. So that's gonna be interesting given that it's a you know, 0 0.7 mil uh, <laughs> drill bit. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, sort that out, but it wasn't. It wasn't spinning true, so uh, I want to get that sorted before I paint it. 
Um, I haven't stuck these uh, stabilizers on yet just because I am not finished with the fuselage. So if I bring in the fuselage to show you. So what I've done here is I have masked off um, all the interior and the engine, just using Tamiya tape. And then I've gone ahead and tried to fix the seam. So it's actually come up pretty well. Uh, the gray primer you see on it is just so that I can see if there's any, um, any seams happening, but it looks like it's come together pretty well. And of course underneath as well, it doesn't appear to be any, any visible seams there. So that's, uh, that's good. So now I'll, um, what I'll probably do is I'll get the white primer out. I'll do the stripe that goes along the back here. And also on the tail, there's a yellow uh, on the rudder here. So I'll do that white and then put the yellow over it. Once I've done that and sort of masked them off, then I can stick these, uh, you know, these back on. So they should just slot in. I don't think there will be any problem gluing those in. So it's getting there slowly, but um, at this point, I think this is where I'll uh, call the end of the video. The next video, of course, will be sort of finishing off the fuselage, getting it all stuck together, and just the final attachment to the base. So, until then, I'll catch you later.